चले आए ठीक है ओके 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 थैंक यू सर तो नेक्स्ट इज योर मैट्रिक्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन इफ जी इज ए ग्रुप देन होमोमोर्फिजिम ऑफ दिस ग्रुप इन टू जी एल एन कॉमा आर एंड जी एल एन कॉमा सी फॉर सम एन इज कॉल्ड मैट्रिक्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ जी द इंटीजर एन इज कॉल्ड द डायमेंशन ऑफ द रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन अदर वर्ड्स ए मैट्रिक्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ डायमेंशन एन असाइंस टू ऑल ग्रुप्स एलिमेंट्स जी बिलोंग्स टू जी ओके so there there is a singular singular non singular matrix dg so that if g1 and g2 are any two elements of the group g then dg1 dg2 is equal to d g1 g2 so uh, it is a real or a complex matrix representation the case may be like this so there are some examples the simplest group g is equal to e comma a with a 0 uh, so g is equal to uh, g have having elements e and a so it it is an abstract group because we know nothing about the mathematical nature of e or a or about the nature of the operation except that uh, it is an associative product we satisfies the group axioms this group is isomorphic to the group s2 or of permutation of two objects A matrix representation of such a group is a mapping G into M, D G into M, uh, for the group elements into a set of uh, capital M of real or complex matrices such that the group law is obeyed by corresponding matrices. Okay, a representation by one-dimensional real matrices that is a real numbers of the group capital G. Which is obviously e comma a is d is equal to a and d a is equal to minus one. A representation by two-dimensional real matrices of the same group, not unrelated to the above one-dimensional representation, is d is equal to one zero zero one, d a is equal to minus one zero zero minus one. Then uh, two cross two matrix representation of d three. Less trivial example is the matrix representation of the group d three. we saw in unit uh, in previous unit we will discuss in previous unit that uh, it is a group of rotation and mirror reflection uh, of an equivalent triangle in a place which i am discussing 15 minute before that how mirror reflection makes the group unchanged it is also the group s3 of six permutations of the vertices of the triangle so the same case which we are discussing earlier illustration of s3 and uh, S three E D three E no change. S three P four D three R one anti clockwise rotation by two pi by three does not change. Then P two. Sir, screen is not visible. No. Okay. So let me. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Is it visible now? Ah, yeah. so this example I have already shown you how mirror rotation make the things same or different. So if S three is equal to E and D three is equal to E, there is no change. If P four, ah, S three is equal to P four and D three is equal to R one, then you have an anti-clockwise rotation. By two pi by three. If S three is equal to P two and for your D three G R two is equal to R one R one anti clockwise rotation by four pi by three. If S three your say P three and D three M three mirror reflection about the line passing through the center and the top vertex. vertex. If S three P one D three M one mirror ref reflection about the line passing through the center. And the lower left vertex, S three P two, D two M two, mirror reflection about the line passing through center and lower right vertex. The group multiplication tables can be summarized, omitting the axon of identity as follows. 
and are shown in the screen rotation in the plane can be represented by a 2 cross 2 matrix which changes coordinates x comma y as a column vector taking the center of the triangle as the origin the equilateral triangle of side of unit length look like in the figure 18.2 a rotation r1 by 2 pi by 3 is equal to 120 degree brings every point uh, x comma y to x bar y bar such that x bar y bar is equal to dr1 x comma xy which is equal to minus half minus uh, root 3 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 minus half x comma y thus r1 is represented by the 2 cross 2 matrix so dr1 minus half minus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 half and r2 is equal to r1 r1 is then represented by two applications of the rotation by 120 degree that is dr2 is equal to dr1 dr1 your dr2 is equal to minus half plus 3 by root over minus 3 root over of 3 by 2 plus root over of 3 by 2 minus half minus half minus root over of 3 by 2 plus root over of 3 by 2 minus half so you will have minus half root over of 3 by 2 minus root over of 3 by 2 minus half so mirror reflection about the line through the vertex 3 and center is e g it just changes the x coordinates to its negative and does not change the y coordinates and you can see it in the screen so dm3 is equal to minus 1 0 0 1 so the mirror reflection in a line form the center making an angle phi with the x axis changes coordinates x comma y to shown in the screen cos 2 pi sin 2 pi sin 2 pi minus cos 2 pi x comma sorry x y so the mirror reflection m1 in a line from vertex 1 is at an angle 3 by 6 is equal to 30 degree with the x axis please mute your uh, mute yourself dm1 is equal to half root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 minus half the mirror reflection m2 in a line from vertex 2 is at the pi minus pi by 6 is equal to 150 uh, 150 degree with the x-axis therefore dm2 uh, plus half minus root over of 3 by 2 minus root over 3 by 2 minus half the identity of the group is always represented by the unit matrix d is equal to 1 0 0 1 this completes the construction of 2 cross 2 representation of the group d3 then 3 plus 3 matrix representation of s3 remember that the group d3 is the same as the permutation group s3 of three objects just as we constructed a two dimensional matrix representation by seeing the effect of rotations and mirror mapping on a two dimensional plane we can also construct three cross three representation or three by three representation by observing how a given permutation works on a column vector containing x1 x2 x3 for example if p4 takes 1 2 3 2 3 2 1 then matrix can do that on x1 x2 x3 by the things as shown in the screen then equivalent representation if you have a ds is equal to s a s inverse this is similarity transformation so if you have a representation g uh, that is into dg of two group of group elements g belongs to g into real or complex matrices or dimension small n let s be a non singular matrix of the same dimension then the matrix d dash g s d g s inverse also form a representation d dash g1 g2 then your reducible and reducible irreducible representation we call a representation reducible if it is equivalent to a representation in a block diagram form or a matrix representation of smaller dimensions unless it will be able to become irreducible in irreducible uh, representation you have things where what cannot be reduced or brought into a block diagram form or a similarity transformation so agar aap isko block diagram mein ya matrix representation mein reduce kar sakte hain then it is called reducible if nahi kar sakte hain that is irreducible so you can see it in the screen then group representation by linear operation so <coughs> uh, 
So this thing, group representation, my linear representation has many advantages, especially when the vector space is infinite dimensional, like the Hilbert space, which we have discussed in quantum mechanics, where it is not easy to deal with the infinite dimensional matrices. Let U1, E2, so on, so forth, E and B, a basis in capital V. Since A, E, I, where I is equal to 1 to N, is again in capital V, it can be expanded in the basis with coefficient A, I, J. So A, E, I, where summation J, A, J, I, E, J. Notice the order of the indices in A, J, I. The N cross N matrix A, J, I is associated with the linear operation A. <clears throat> if B is another linear operator, then B A E I is equal to summation J A J I B E J is equal to summation J comma K A J I B K J E K. So summation K summation J B K J A J I E K. So summation K B A K I E K. This shows that the product B of operators B and A is associated with the product of corresponding matrices. We can therefore also look for the representation of a group G as a G into a G by operation in a vector space in place of matrix. So the things goes like this. And you can see the matrices associated with an operator in two different bases are related by similarity transformation as we have discussed. So there are examples of how you can reduce A uh, in S3 and uh, there are three dimensional space for reducing S3. Then your every representation of a finite group can be made unitary by a similarity transformation. And this is the proof in page 57, 58 and 59. Then your source lemma. Suppose DG is an irreducible n cross n matrix or n by n matrix representation of a finite group, and there is a matrix capital N of the same size which commute with every DG, where G belongs to G, then MDG is equal to DGM or every G belongs to G. This is source lemma tells us that such a matrix M can only be a constant times the identity matrix. The proof goes like this D. G dagger, M dagger is equal to M dagger, DG dagger, and where your DG is a unitary representation and MDG is equal to DGM. Now multiplying the equation DG dagger, M dagger is equal to M dagger, DG dagger uh, on the left hand and right hand side by DG and DG dagger respectively we get M dagger DG is equal to DG M dagger. Therefore, if M commute with every DG, then M dagger also does so. And therefore, the Hermitian matrices M1 is equal to M plus M dagger and M2 is equal to M minus M dagger by I also do so. Therefore, there is no harm in providing the theorem for M1 and M2, which are Hermitian. If M1 is Hermitian, there is a unitary matrix U such that it is diagonalized by it. So D1 is equal to U, M1, U uh, inverse and M1 is equal to U inverse DU. The commutation property is now U inverse D1 U DG is equal to DG U inverse D1 U. Now multiplying by U and U inverse on the left and right and calling D dash G is equal to U DG U inverse. You can have D1 D dash G is equal to D dash G D1 for every G belongs to G. Let the matrix elements of DG and D1 be labeled by a comma b comma c or a b a b and c is equal to one so on so forth n the above equation or the discussed equation then is for all a comma c where summation b d1 a b d dash g b c is equal to summation b d dash g a b d1 b c since d1 is diagonal the off diagonal elements are zero now you have d1 a a D dash G A C is equal to D dash G A C D1 C C. This means that D dash G A C D1 C C minus D1 A A is equal to 0. If for some values of A and C, it is true that D1 C C is not equal to D1 A A, then the matrix 
element d dash g is c is equal to zero. So we rearrange all these rows and columns for which the diagonal elements of d1 are unequal. The representation matrices d dash g for all g belongs to g in this rearrangement will be in block diagonal form and reducible. For that is a contradiction because the representation is assumed to be irreducible. Therefore, all the diagonal elements of D1, D1 are equal and the matrix is multiple of identity. Okay. Same result follows for M2 and therefore for M which has to be proved. We had assumed the representation DG to be unitary to begin with, but that is not necessary because we can use a similarity transformation to bring DG to unitary form using a similarity matrix S and prove that the matrix S, M, S, bar, S inverse is a multiple of identity S, M, S inverse is equal to C1. But then M is equal to C, S inverse 1, S is equal to C1, which has to be proved. Okay, so this is all about matrix. Then the group. So we have studied group, then continuous group. So there are two concepts, active transformation and passive transformation. So we have discussed symmetry, symmetry groups. And in physics, we have transformation. It is important to remember the distinction between active and passive transformation. So what is active transformation? When we think of a rigid body being rotated about an axis by a certain angle, it is an example of active transformation. But when we keep the body fixed, but we move the coordinate system by rotation, the coordinates of the points of the body in the old coordinate system are transformed to coordinates of the same point in the new coordinate system. This is passive transformation. There are two things. Suppose in C, in figure 19.1. In A, what you do? The coordinate axes are fixed. A, X, Y are fixed at their place. You just move the point from uh, X axis to a point in X, Y plane. So when we move the points from one place to another, it is an example of active transformation. But in figure B, you see, your point is in X axis. Then you rotate X, Y axis to certain angle. And you have X dash and Y dash. Now, your point is in uh, fourth quadrant. The point was in X axis. When you rotate the coordinate to an angle theta in anticlockwise direction, then your point is in a third quadrant. So this is a passive transformation. In A, your point goes from X axis to X, Y plane, and your coordinate axis are fixed. That is an example of active transformation. In B, your point is fixed, but the coordinate axis is rotated. Now your point goes from X axis to fourth quadrant. That is an example of passive transformation. The position coordinates of various points of the body changes after rotation. These changes of position are called active transformation of rotation. In active case, there is one coordinate system and infinitely many different rotations can be imparted to the body. In passive case, there are infinite number of coordinate systems related by rotation. Mathematically, both are symmetries and they are equivalent, but the parameters have opposite signs. If a body is actively rotated by an angle pi by 4 about the z axis, a point of the body on the xy plane with coordinates 1, 0, 0 will acquire coordinates 1 by root over of 2, 1 by root over of 2, 0, so on and so forth. Okay, so your active and passive transformation can be described like this. Then your simplest continuous groups. So what is continuous group or lie group? Continuous group or lie groups are groups such that each element of the group is specified by one or several or finite number of real parameters. Such groups necessarily have an 
infinite number of elements. The group law is the rule which tells us how to calculate the parameters of the product element given two sets of parameters specifying the two elements. C. Orthogonal group O3. A simple and important example to consider rotation in three dimensional space is orthogonal group O3. Rotations have the property that there is one special point which remains fixed, distances between any pairs of points of the rotated body remain unchanged, so on and so forth. So you see, it is seen in the screen. So, what do you, what do you conclude? The space inversion or parity matrix which reverses the sign of each coordinates is equal to minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1 is equal to minus 1. This is achieved by R inverse transpose R inverse is equal to R, R transpose whole transpose R transpose is equal to R R transpose is equal to 1. So this is this belongs to O3 group. The space inversion Ix is actually not a rotation because it cannot be physically achieved by rotating a body. The actual rotation group is a subgroup of O3, which we will discuss. So see, here, let us take the origin of Cartesian coordinate as O. So there are general point P of the body have coordinates uh, uh, X uh, superscript 1 or uh, X, X square, X3 before the rotation or x superscript 1, x superscript 2, x superscript 3. You can have x 1 dash, 2 dash, and x 3 dash after the rotation. So you can achieve it by transposing. Okay. Now, a general element of O3 can have determinant either plus 1 or minus 1. The product of two matrices with a determinant plus 1 is again a matrix with a determinant plus one. Therefore, a subset of O3, which has matrices with a determinant plus one, is a subgroup denoted by uh, SO3 called the special orthogonal group. Thus, the group O3 has two cosets, the subgroup SO3 and the set of matrices with a determinant minus one. So in the space inversion matrix has determinant equal to minus one, any O3 matrix T with a determinant equal to minus 1 can be written as T is equal to ISR. Note that if T belongs to O3, then both T and T inverse have the same determinant because T inverse is equal to T transpose. O3 and SO3 are more elaborate examples of continuous or lie groups. As mentioned above, these groups have a continuous infinity of group elements. Each group element is labeled by a number of real parameters. Okay. So O3 needs a three real parameters to specify a group element. A three cross three matrix R has nine elements. The orthogonality condition R transpose R is equal to one is equivalent to six conditions. R transpose R is a symmetric matrix with six elements actually independent three elements on the diagonal and three elements on the one side of the diagonal. Elements on one side of the diagonal are equal to corresponding elements on the other side of side in a symmetric matrix. Therefore, there are only three free parameters. The three independent parameter can be chosen in infinitely many ways. So one parameter subgroup SO3 can be seen in figure 19.2 when we rotate about an axis. These are especially simple rotation because if the axis is fixed, a single parameter, the angle of rotation is enough to specify the rotation completely. It was proved by Euler in 1776 that every rotation can be seen as a rotation about an axis by a definite angle. What it means is this, although one can arrive at the same final position of a rigid body in infinitely many impossible ways through all kinds of rotation, the final position can always be obtained from the initial position by a single rotation about an axis by a certain angle. Let us fix a point O and P and Q two points on the body. Let the final position of the two points be P dash 
and QDS. The axis can be found as follows. Draw a plane perpendicular to POPDS and uh, bisecting the angle POPDS. Similarly, draw a plane perpendicular to QOQDS and bisecting the angle QOQDS. If these planes are not coincident, then the intersecting line of these planes in the, is the axis. If the two planes are coincident, then the axis is the intersecting line of plane POQ and PDSOQDS. Rotation about a fixed axis can be leveled by giving the direction of the axis, which requires two parameters, and the angle by which the rotation is made, which is a number of line between 0 and 2 pi when the angle is measured in radians. At angle 2 pi, the rotation becomes equal to identity and should avoid the identity element to be given by two different parameters. Therefore, rotation by 2 pi is equated to identity. If we fix the axis, then there is only one parameter to specify the rotation. This rotation about a fixed axis define a subgroup because two successive rotation by angles theta 1 and theta 2 give a rotation by angle theta 1 plus theta 2. It is impossible that theta 1 plus theta 2 exceeds 2 pi. In that case, the added angle is the excess over 2 pi. This one parameter group of rotation with a fixed axis is called the group SO2 as a rotation in the two-dimensional plane perpendicular to the axis. It is subgroup of SO3. So SO2 is a subgroup of SO3. Then your generators of one parameter subgroups. Since rotation about a fixed axis add up, it is possible to build finite rotations by successive application of very large number of very small rotations. This suggests that we should look at the structure of infinitesimal rotations. Pardon. An active rotation by, by an angle theta about the three, three axis in right-handed Cartesian coordinate system is SO3 matrix, which can be written as R3, which is a function of theta, is equal to cos theta minus sin theta 0, sin theta cos theta 0, 0, 0, 0, written in matrix form, which is equal to 1 minus theta square plus 2 factorial plus so on and so forth, minus theta plus theta q by 3 factorial plus so on and so forth, 0, theta minus theta q by 3 factorial plus so on and so forth, 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus so on and so forth, 0, 0, 0, 1, written in matrix from plus so on and so forth. Where theta is greater than zero, means that the rotation is the is in the right-handed screw sense, that is anti-clockwise in the plane parallel to this plane. For infinite small theta, this matrix is limit theta tends to zero, R3, which is a function of theta is equal to 1 plus theta multiplied by the matrix 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 minus theta square by 2 factorial multiplied by the matrix 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 is equal to 1 plus theta j3 plus theta square 2 factorial j3 square plus so on so forth. The matrix j3 is equal to 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 0. We can see that j3 square is equal to minus 1, j3 q is equal to minus j3, j3 to the power 4 is equal to 1, so on and so forth. Therefore, even for finite uh, theta r3, which is a function of theta, is equal to exponential theta j3 is equal to 1 plus theta j3 plus theta square by 2 j3 square plus so on and so forth. j3 is called the generator of rotation about the three axes because all finite angle rotations about three axes can be built out of it. Similarly, an infinitesimal rotation about the axis R1 theta is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0 cos theta minus sin theta, 0 sin theta cos theta is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus minus theta plus theta q by 3 factorial plus so on and so forth. 0 theta minus theta q by 3 factorial plus so on and so forth, 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus so on and so forth, plus 
so on and so forth can be written as r1 which is a function of theta is equal to 1 plus theta j1 plus theta 2 by 2 j1 square so on and so forth is equal to x e to the power theta j1 where j1 is equal to matrix 0 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 1 0 and an infinitesimal rotation about the two axis so your r2 theta is equal to cos theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 minus sin theta 0 cos theta this gives a, in a similar manner r2 theta is equal to 1 plus theta j2 plus theta 2 by 2 j2 square plus so on so forth is equal to e to the power theta j2 with j2 is equal to 0 0 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 then we will discuss commutator of generators rotation about axis in different directions do not commute the simplest case is two infinitesimal rotation r1 is equal to r1 theta about coordinate axis 1 and r2 is equal to r2 phi about axis 2 theta and phi being small so let us see how much mismatch is there when these two infinitesimal rotations are applied one after the other in two different ways if r1 r2 is equal to r1 r2 minus r2 r1 or 0 then the result of r1 r2 and r2 r1 would have been the same acting on any vector x but in general r1 r2 x is not equal to r2 r1 x or multiplying by inverse r2 inverse r1 inverse r2 r1 is not equal to 1. The failure of commutating can therefore be estimated by calculating r2 inverse r1 inverse r2 r1 minus r2 which is a function of minus phi r1 which is a function of minus theta r2 which is a function of phi r1 which is a function of theta. So keeping quantities up to second order r2 phi r1 theta is equal to 1 plus phi j2 minus phi square j2 square by 2 plus so on and so forth multiplied by 1 plus theta j1 minus theta square j1 square by 2 plus so on and so forth is equal to 1 plus phi j2 plus theta j1 plus phi theta j2 j1 minus phi square j2 square by 2 minus theta square j1 square by 2 plus so on and so forth similarly changing signs of phi and theta r2 minus phi r1 minus theta is equal to 1 minus phi j2 minus theta j1 plus phi theta j2 j1 minus phi square j2 square by 2 minus theta square j1 square by 2 plus one so forth therefore r2 minus phi r1 minus theta r2 phi r1 theta is equal to 1 minus phi j2 minus theta j1 plus phi theta j2 j1 minus phi square j2 square by 2 minus theta square j1 square by 2 plus so on so forth multiplied by 1 plus phi j2 plus theta j1 plus phi theta j2 j1 minus phi square j2 square by 2 minus theta square j1 square by 2 plus so on and so forth keeping again up to the second order we can see that r2 minus phi r1 minus theta r2 phi r1 theta is equal to 1 plus phi theta j2 j1 minus j1 j2 plus so on and so forth this shows that the effect of applying infinitesimal rotation by theta about axis 1 followed by an infinitesimal rotation by phi about axis 2 and then an inverse infinitesimal rotation about axis 1 by minus theta followed by an infinitesimal rotation about axis 2 by angle minus phi is equivalent to an infinitesimal rotation by an angle phi theta about an axis whose generator is j2 j1 minus j1 j2 is the multiplication of matrices 0 0 1 0 0 0, 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 minus 0 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 1 0 multiplied by 0 0 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 and which is nothing but 0 1 0 minus 1 
zero 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 matrix and it is nothing but minus j3 thus the resulting rotation axis is the negative of j3 we have taken rotations about the coordinate axis but one should one could take any arbitrary directions and obtain similar relations between generators the relation above shows the relation discussed here shows that the commutator of the generators of rotations in one and two directions is the generator in the three direction so your j1 j2 is equal to j1 j2 minus j2 j1 is equal to j3 so we can show similarly that j2 j3 is equal to j1 and j3 j1 is equal to j2 lie algebra of generator is an important concept we can now general rotation that is uh, a member of uh, so3 is an orthogonal 3 cross 3 matrix uh, r with a determinant equal to 1 the identity matrix corresponds to no rotation therefore an infinitesimal rotation is a matrix infinitesimally different from the identity matrix so we can write r is equal to 1 plus capital f where elements of m are all small quantities the condition of orthogonality requires that 1 is equal to r transpose r is equal to 1 plus m transpose multiplied by 1 plus m which is equal to 1 plus m transpose plus m plus second order of smallness therefore in the limit of infinitesimal rotation m transpose plus m is equal to 0 or m transpose is equal to minus m the infinitesimal rotation matrix differs from the identity matrix by an anti-symmetric matrix so the generators j1 j2 j3 in the uh, are anti-symmetric matrices so there are as many generators as the number of possible rotation axis which are infinite in number these generators are all possible anti-symmetric matrices now the set of generators that is the set of anti-symmetric 3 cross 3 real matrix forms a real vector space of dimension 3 because the sum of two anti-symmetric matrices is also anti-symmetric and if you multiply an anti-symmetric matrix by a real number it remains anti-symmetric the commutator of two anti-symmetric matrices is also anti-symmetric so let m and n be two anti-symmetric matrices then we can use m transpose is equal to minus m and n transpose is equal to minus m so we have mn transpose is equal to mn minus nm transpose is equal to n transpose m transpose minus m transpose n transpose is equal to nm minus mn is equal to minus m comma n so what is the dimension of this space in general a 3 by 3 real matrix has nine independent elements if it is anti-symmetric the diagonal elements are zero and the remaining six elements are pairwise negative to each other thus there are only three independent matrices all others can be written as a linear combination of these three so you can write m as 0 a b minus a 0 c minus b minus c 0 so this can be written as minus a 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 matrix plus b 0 0 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 matrix minus c 0 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 1 0 matrix this can be written as minus cj1 plus bj2 minus a j3 therefore every generator of so3 is a member of the vector space 3 by 3 anti-symmetric matrices moreover this vector space has the commutator of two elements again belonging to the same space the commutator acts like a bilinear product as shown in the screen m n plus p can be written as mn mp where m n is equal to a m n m plus n p can be written as m p plus n p where m a n is equal to a m n in addition it is anti-symmetric so m comma n is equal to minus n comma m and this satisfies the jacobi identity l uh, mn mn l nl m is equal to zero any vector space which has a bilinear relation defined on it 
is an algebra a vector space like uh, the things we have discussed here with an anti-symmetric bilinear product satisfying Jacobi identity is called a Lie algebra. The bilinear product is the commutator of two matrices. Most products encountered in physics are associative products. For example, the matrix multiplication ABC is equal to ABC, but the Jacobi identity shows that the product in a Lie algebra is non-associative. That is MNP is not equal to MNP. In general, the only other place a non-associative product is encountered in elementary physics is Poisson bracket in classical mechanics. There too, there is a Lie algebra of phase space function. Since every element of the Lie algebra can be written as a linear combination of its basis elements, it is enough to specify the commutator only for the basis elements. In a Lie algebra of dimension n with basis u1, e2, so on and so forth, en, we can write ei, ej, which again belong to the vector space of the Lie algebra as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So ei, ej is equal to summation k, cij, k, k, where the n square n minus 1 by 2 real numbers, that is cij, k is equal to cj, k, are called the structure constants of the Lie algebra. So things are like this. The generator of all symmetry transformations are proportional to physical quantities or observables which are represented by Hermitian operator which I have discussed in your quantum mechanics class. It is a time or not practice to redefine generators with a factor proportional to imaginary unit and convert the anti-Hermitian operator into Hermitian operator as shown in the screen. Your J1, J2 cap, J1 cap, J2 cap is equal to I, J3 cap. This may be, this may give the impression that the structure constants are imaginary, but that is not so. As is well known, the generator J cap are called components of angular momentum. We have given the generator starting from the active rotation matrices, uh, as we, as well as in this discussion, passive transformation are used as well. Uh, u 1 plus theta j 1 plus so on so forth is equal to 1 plus i theta j 1 cap and so on. So we must have been careful for these signs. Then our main coaxial space and the Lorentz group. Oh, we use units such so that time is measured in meters with the help of the universal constant c, which represents velocity of light in vacuum. This effectively makes c is equal to 1 in relatively relativity formula and velocities become dimension uh, less numbers so you just recollect Lorentz transformation e ds x ds y ds z ds is not equal to 1 minus root over 1 minus b square minus v root over 1 minus v square 0 0 minus v root over 1 minus v square 1 divided by uh, 1 minus v square 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 and multiplied by the matrix T x y z. So it relates the same event P which is specified by T comma x comma y comma z and T dash comma y dash comma z T dash comma x dash comma y dash comma z dash. But the uh, expression T dash x dash y dash z dash is equal to 1 by root over of 1 minus v square minus v by root over of 1 minus v square 0 0 minus v by 1 root over of 1 minus v square 1 by root over of 1 minus v square 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 multiplied by t x y z so you can see there are two frames of reference s and s dash which means we are using passive transformation and the two frames are they are such that their axis are parallel. The x and x dash axis are collinear. S dash moves with velocity v with respect to s along the x axis. The clocks are set so that when the origins of two frames coincides, t is equal to 0 is equal to t dash. So this is written in the matrix equation x dash is equal to lx, where x is the single column matrix as shown in the 
screen in the screen and uh, similarity of uh, xts the matrix l is a 4 by 4 cross 4 matrix or 4 by 4 matrix the example is a special Lorentz transformation called boost in one dimension so a Lorentz transformation is a real 4 by 4 matrix l which transforms uh, x into x dash is equal to lx such that uh, minus uh, x0 square plus x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square is equal to minus x dash 0 square plus x dash 1 square plus x dash 2 square plus x dash 3 square so okay this condition can be written more compactly using a matrix eta is uh, having diagonal um, elements minus one 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 one, one. so x transpose eta x is equal to x ds transpose eta x ds therefore if x ds is equal to lx then the condition for l to be a Lorentz matrix is x ds transpose eta x ds is equal to x transpose l transpose eta lx is equal to x transpose eta x since this is true for any arbitrary x it follows that l transpose eta l is equal to eta thus any real 4 by 4 matrix that satisfies the above that satisfies the equation is a lorentz transformation and mean quick space you usually come across in physics where you can think of a four dimensional vector space in analogy to three dimensional space where position vectors are x is equal to x0 x1 x2 and x3 in relativistic physics you will come across this and where the inner product or dot product between two vectors x and y is given by x by is equal to x multiplied y is equal to x transpose eta y this four times space is called main coaxial space a set of vectors corresponding to x multiplied by x is equal to zero are called light like or null vectors and xy can be written as x transpose eta x is equal to minus x0 square plus x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square can be regarded as length squared of a vector null vectors form double cone this is the surface of main coaxial space satisfying x0 square x equal to x1 square x2 square plus x3 square under x0 is equal to plus minus root over x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square with the vertex at origin 0, 0, 0, 0 transpose and vertex angle of 45 degree. This cone is called the light cone. The time axis is the axis of the cone. The positive side of the cone, that is the half cone through which the positive half of the time axis passes, is called the forward light cone. And the negative side of the cone, the backward light cone. All vector with a, uh, x, x, uh, x smaller than zero lie within the light cone and they are uh, they are called light time like vectors the remaining vector with the x multiplied by x greater than zero lie in the wedge like region and they are called space like vectors so there are two types of vectors time like vector and space like vector then you have the lorentz group the l uh, let l be the set of four by four lorentz transformation matrices these form a group called lorentz group with matrix multiplication as the group law. The inverse of each matrix exists because determinant of L is not equal to zero. And the determinant of any Lorentz matrix can be either plus one or minus one. This follows from L transpose eta L is equal to eta and taking determinant on both sides to obtain determinant of L square is equal to one. And you can check that L inverse is equal to eta, L transpose eta. So there are questions and uh, you can go through it then your sl uh, 2c and the lorentz group uh, special linear group complex matrix and your Pauli matrix we'll also discuss in quantum mechanics to maybe tomorrow although the placing of uh, subscripts on the constant Pauli matrices is like that of covariant vector it is not a covariant four vector we'll always use Pauli matrix within lower indices and you can go through these derivations and you can prove 
the hormone cell to c is a two is to one and uh, how to find the kernel okay there are some examples and uh, boost of hormesian sl to c to matrix to matrix rotation and su2 group and so on so forth forms of general sl to c matrix the matrix uh, <coughs> and other useful formula okay so this is all about this last unit and we'll discuss other units uh, in our next class am i audible yes sir yeah okay. so i have uh, sent this material to deputy director sir so he may uh, mail it to you those who have not got the uh, course material either hard copy or soft copy then tomorrow we'll go to other chapters for your transform laplace transform and others then uh, your another chapter is also i think uh, we did not cover vector space matrix and tensors okay so tomorrow what will you prefer quantum mechanics or mathematical physics mathematical physics sir okay tomorrow we will go for mathematical physics okay thank you hello okay sir thank you hello thank you sir thank uh, you any, sir any other query yes sir i am a new student here we can i find the other recorded videos i uh, i don't have the uh, uh, recorded things so you can contact your deputy director sir for this okay okay deputy director saab se contact kijiye unke paas recorded hoga okay and also can anyone add me in the whatsapp group please message your whatsapp number and somebody who is admin please add her yes, i have message my whatsapp number the message box write down your whatsapp number and i request one any, any if anybody any admin is here Lizard. Okay, so thank you. Sir, Namaskar. Namaskar again. Sir, बहुत सारा number काली दीदी ने लामू message call नहीं group रहे कि add add करिए तो ही actually sir हमें please now write down your WhatsApp number. Write down your WhatsApp number in in call messages and I request any of the admin please add. ठीक और ना अच्छा दीदी ने कहला नहीं अबे तो कौन कांटेक्ट है क्लास भी अगला कहीं भी ऐड करना है कौन है तो यू प्लीज कांटेक्ट द डेप्यूटी डायरेक्टर साहब ओके मेली सर थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल फॉर योर क्वेश्चंस हियरिंग आप करियो हां आई नीड टू डिस्कस योर दैट इन मोर आई नीड अदर पार्ट ऑफ द टीम